And when we get the demise of um, uh, paper currencies, I can see silver certainly returning as money a lot easier for most people than for gold. Now, the thing that's interesting is that we've all been talking about gold, of course, because that is the big money. That is the money which is rec recognized as money by central banks. It is the money where there is no counterparty risk if you actually own the bullion. And I'd just like to say, incidentally, that I'm talking about money. I'm not talking about an investment. Um, and listeners, uh, participants in this uh, conference must not confuse physical gold, physical silver as an investment. It is money. That's the whole thing. Now, what's happening to silver is it is coming back as money. And that is why from literally the moment the Fed said, we will do whatever it takes, we will print however much money it takes, the inflationary outlook, the prospect of the demise of fiat currencies meant that a degree of moneyness began to return to silver. And silver indeed ran up from, I can't remember what the low was, $11 or something. And currently we're looking at what, 26, 27. Now, um, the question really is, what role will silver play as money in this new world? Well, this is interesting because if you go back in history, um, silver in, 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 in England actually was money from the time of Henry II all the way through to uh, around about 1820-ish um, when there was, uh, we, were, we were actually off the standard at that stage. But um, sterling silver was money all that time. Gold was a secondary issue when it came to money. Um, in the early days of America, when, um, God bless you, you were one of our colonies, <laughs> you took on the role of silver as money. Gold had a secondary role, in effect. And it, you know, we went into bimetabolism, bimetallism, and, um, you know, others have done that as well. And then in uh, 1870, um, the uh, Germans um, uh, won the Franco-Prussian War against uh, France and uh, France had to pay reparations. They didn't have any silver. They had gold. They paid gold to Germany. Germany then had enough gold to say, right, we're going to go off silver. We're going to go on a gold standard. So really from that point, silver really did lose its moneyness to gold. And um, the uh, ratio between gold and silver actually started rising very dramatically because the price of silver fell to the price, if you like, of the next useful um, uh, uh, role for, for it, which basically was as a, as a precious metal rather than money. So that was the background to it, to the history of silver. Um, and the reason I mention this is that silver is as much money as gold. In, throughout history, and probably it has been more the money of people than gold ever was. Gold, if you like, is the money of kings, silver is the money of people. Because um, more people have got things like, uh, you know, silver items and so on and so forth, which uh, they could melt down or swap or whatever. Um, there are a huge number of silver coins um, around. Um, I would think more so than gold. I don't know what the statistics are, but I'd be very surprised if there are more gold coins around than silver coins. Um, so I can see silver playing a major role as the replacement money for fiat currency in this brave new world, which we are undoubtedly going to face, and I think we'll probably face fairly quickly. And it's also worth no noting that um, the above ground stocks of gold are considerably larger than the above ground stocks of silver because silver is always consumed. And um, the relationship, as I understand it, is that there's probably about $35 billion worth of silver above ground. Uh, gold, um, gold over 10 trillion. Now, that's a relationship of about 280 times as much above ground stock of gold as there is of silver. Yet the mine supply ratio is only about eight times. So you can see that the situation could get very, very tight in terms of silver at anything like even far higher prices. So I would expect that gold silver ratio certainly in the sort of scenario that I've just described, the collapse of fiat currency, to return to Sir Isaac Newton's 15 and a half. And I think I could even justify it going below that. I mean, the point about Isaac Newton's 15 and a half um, uh, ratio of uh, gold, silver ounces to gold, uh, was that that actually overpriced gold, particularly following various gold discoveries. Um, 
in, in Guinea, which was where we got the term the Guinea. Uh, and then in the uh, uh, 19th century, we had uh, gold discoveries, obviously in California, then, uh, then Australia, and then South Africa. I mean, the quantity of gold just ab absolutely rocketed. So as a monetary metal, we have pretty good evidence to suggest that silver uh, should be um, more expensive, if you like, on a gold-silver ratio than that Isaac Newton's 15 and a half to one. Given that the likelihood of uh, the ending of fiat currency is happening quite quickly, uh, really what we need to do, I think, is, is ensure that we've got silver in our hands as well as gold. And at current prices, it makes more sense to load up on silver, in my view, than gold. But the one thing we know is that the Fed will not permit the total amount of money in the economy to contract. So every move towards bank credit contraction will be more than made up by the expansion of base money, M1, if you like, narrow money. Now, this was actually what um, the FOMC said back on the 23rd of March when they panicked. I mean, we were everybody was beginning to go into lockdown. On the 16th of March, they cut the Fed funds rate from 1% to zero. And then on the 23rd, which was a Monday, panic statement comes out. We will do whatever it takes. We will print whatever it takes to sort out this problem. And of course, they were talking about COVID. They weren't talking about the other problems. They're still there. We have a 1929 situation without COVID. This, my friend, is an extremely serious situation. And how is it going to be resolved? It will be resolved only one way, and that is through money printing. So that is the background, if you like, to gold and silver. I mean, basically, people don't understand what's going on, Chris. They really don't. And that is why silver is only priced where it is. It's, it is a problem, I think, working that one out, because, as I said earlier, the relationship of above ground stock of gold is absolutely enormous, like 280 times the amount of above ground silver. So on that basis, I think uh, we've got something, I think something like three, three billion dollars worth of gold and silver and platinum group metals. But it's basically gold and silver. Um, I would have thought in terms of weight. Yes, probably more silver than gold. Um, I could certainly see that. But in terms of monetary value, I should think it's probably more gold than silver. And that would um, that would, I think, um, uh, if you like, sort of fall in line with the fact that every time we talk about sound money, we only talk in terms of gold. Gold, you know, silver is rather like the, sort of the junior, uh, the junior version. Um, and we talk about gold and we just assume that everybody knows that it sort of incorporates silver as well. So um, I think as this situation progresses, I would see demand switching towards silver. But the important thing is the amount of silver available for what they call investment, but I'm telling you it's money, is actually very, very strictly limited.